Hey y'all, welcome to the Southern Mix podcast. This is episode 15. This is a podcast where I talk about my knitting, crochet, cross stitch, and just anything general in the general crafty family that I get up to. I try to upload new episodes every couple of weeks, um, sometimes shorter, sometimes longer. But yeah, I um, thought that I would knock one out today because I have one, I have a ton of whips and um, I don't think I have anything completed, which just suddenly bummed me out. But uh, oh, except for my test knit. So that's what I really wanted to come on here and show y'all. Um, so let's just get right into it. And at the um, end, I will list off my social media stuff and I will just pop it down in the description box below so you can browse that at your leisure so just to get right into it this is this will be the one finished object this is a test knit that i did for charlie couture she is uh i think she's in quebec i should have checked that but she reached out to me asking me if i would like to test knit a cow pattern that she wrote up and i said uh yes so here it is i've finished Isn't it so pretty it's got cables and then the V detail and you seam it up she has written it um, two sizes so I believe the smaller one is a 24 inch and this one is a 34 inch and she requested to knit it up in this Bernat chunky yarn I could only find the softy chunky so that's what I used but this is 100% acrylic. I got it at Joann's. It says it's a super bulky, a weight six. Recommends needles size eight millimeter. I used, uh, the pattern calls for six millimeter needles for this. So that's what I used and got gauge. And then before you seam it up, you block it. So because it's acrylic, it didn't change it a lot, but it did kind of like lighten it up a little but I took some pictures, so I'll put some in. It's so cozy, actually. I can't, like, do anything about my hair. So in my pictures, I have some, you know, where I'm wearing it up. You could put it um, under a jacket. That would be really nice. Or I like, you can fold it down like that and wear it like that and kind of just you know like nestle into it it's amazing and so warm it was a little cold today while i was taking the pictures so it was nice. it was actually nice to wear it i thought it would be a little hot but it was actually really nice so um and all it is it is a it's a repeat so once you finish one of these you start back over and of course you have your cables on the side so if you wanted it longer or shorter you could totally um keep doing that so i used I have it all written down. I'm going to send Charlie the notes but that I took while I was testing the pattern for her. But um, I think I only used two balls for this. So maybe I just got into a third. There are... That would be wonderful. 108 yards. So about 300. So I did use three. So there's it's about 350-ish yards that I used of this so yeah and I have some left over so I can make another one actually I got plenty while I was there because I don't really uh, go to Joann's or Michael's very often anymore so I made sure to stock up and lucky I did because that was right before the corona just kind of knocked all the stores down so yeah that was lucky but yeah I'm extremely excited about this I will definitely post when she's got the pattern up um, ready to go and everything. I'm not exactly sure when that will be, but this is almost a must knit. I would, I would kind of like to do it again in a fingering weight, maybe held double or a DK weight, like a marled yarn or something and just see how that is because 
if it was just a little bit, it's just the yarn, not the pattern, but if it was a little bit more drapey, you could wear it almost all day. Like I might not wear this all day, like in the office or anything, just because it is so sturdy and cozy and warm. So I might get a little hot, but a lighter one, you could just wear it like as a scarf accessory or something. So yeah, I'm really excited. Thank you so much for letting me test knit that for you. I was stoked because I had never um, knit anything with a bulky weight yarn, I don't think. And I've definitely not knit cables with bulky yarn, especially a cable repeat like this that was a little bit more involved. I would say that the pattern is so well written that um, even if you're uh, maybe not a beginner, but a confident beginner or intermediate, you could definitely do this. I shouldn't say that because anybody can do anything. You can do it if you wanna do it. it and especially because um, all the tutorials and stuff that are out there on YouTube or, you know, I mean, literally everywhere. If I can't do something, I just type it into Google. I watch some videos. You know, there's uh, Pink Knits, Very Pink Knits and Pearl Soho. They have so many good tutorials. So, yeah, when this comes out, if you are interested in it, I highly, highly recommend it. I just think it's so fun. I was actually sick for a little bit, so I wasn't able to do it very quickly, but it would work up quickly if you had the time to devote to it. And the one fun thing that I thought uh, I really liked is that after knitting with this really thick, bulky yarn, I went back to my fingering weight projects and they fly after doing something like this because it's just so involved like the wrist movement and all and it's really heavy. So going back to that like really thin yarn it was really I like that so it kind of um, inspired me to add a little bit more a variation in the weight of the projects that I work on I just don't find very many bulky projects that I um, am interested in but we'll see this is like taking me down a rabbit hole so yeah we'll see so the rest of the um, episode is just going to be about my whips. It's a lot of sweaters as usual. And then um, I have one acquisition that I'm really excited about. And then I'll just kind of ramble on towards the end. So hopefully this isn't a million years long, but we'll see. I'm just here to enjoy the ride and I hope y'all will enjoy it with me. First up is the Everlong Never Ending Arata by Jen Steingast with Knit Love Cool. I have finished the body on this guy. Yay! I'm going to try not to hit the mic. So um, just to get the yarn out of the way, it's Drops Flora and I don't think they have color names. I always say that. And then it's all Drops Flora except I held the white, no I held the gray double with a kid silk mohair also from drops so it's got the blue and the white and that pretty tulip pattern so i finally finished the body and if y'all have watched before you would know that i didn't think this was going to fit me and that's why i kind of lost steam on it and was upset and blah 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 but i tried it on once i cast off the body and it does fit before blocking or anything and it fits just fine so I've started my sleeve. I'm doing the magic loop method. So, and these are my um, Chiagu Red Lace in their 3.5 millimeters, the 40 inch circulars. So yeah, they're just my fixed circulars, my favorite. I only have two sets. I have the 3.75 and the 3.5. Those are what most of my sweaters are knit out of and both in the 40. So I, I tend to just do magic loop and use the same all the way through or I might cast on you y'all you, get it I cast on smaller needles from something else and I do plan on get getting the full set all the Chiagus I love these needles they're not that I've used a lot of needles because I haven't but I just they're the perfect sharpness like they don't they're stabby a little but they're not gonna draw blood like I've heard the Haya Hayas do and yeah but i wasn't able to start back work with the coronavirus and all so i can't afford it right now but it is definitely in my dream my dream wants so yeah um this is this and i had to show y'all because i have finally finished the body 
but I have so many other projects that I don't think that I'm going to hustle on these sleeves or anything so it might be a whole while before this is pulled back out and worked on I do plan right now only to do three quarter sleeves because I'm just so over it so we'll see if like full length sleeves come because I do have a lot of this color left and I would like to use it up it's not this color suits my skin tone really well but it's not one of my favorite colors I'm always drawn towards like the purple pinks but it's just not like when I'm actually wearing it it's not my favorite favorite so yeah we'll see this is just love the pattern I have I have bought this is in my make a million for this year like the 20 sweaters that I want to make this year I have at least purchased five other knit love wool gin stein gas patterns like the um Winfell I can't even name them all but she she was always writing like bundle sales so I thought why not stock up on them because I'm definitely going to make them so yeah I've actually cast on another one of her patterns so I'll talk about that in a second but yeah so that is so exciting and you can tell it's been folded up and all because it just sits on the back of the couch in case it ever the urge ever comes over me to knit on it so yeah moving right along so decided to go ahead and talk about the other Knit Love Wool Gin Stein Gas pattern that I cast on, which is the Bright Feather sweater. I love this the very second I saw her post it on Instagram. She was just kind of hyping up the pattern release and everything, and I favorited it right then and there, made a mental note, you have to buy this. So I bought it like the very second because she also runs sales sometimes whenever she drops patterns. So yes, I love it. It um, Y'all saw the picture I put up, but it is just a folded neckline, just kind of like the ar Arata, and it's got short row shaping to drop the back down a little bit, and then the pattern all the way across is, it's kind of rolled up feathers. So they're facing down, and what I've done, so the main body is in drop snored, one day I'll have a really cool camera that does that like auto focusing thing. So the Nord is 45% alpaca, 30% polyamine, and 25% wool. So I bought a ton of this the last time I purchased a whole thing from Wool Warehouse and it's my first time using it. And I prefer it to the Flora and to the alpaca. Definitely to the alpaca. It was between this and the Flora. But while this is still wooly, it's a little bit softer. I guess that's the polyamide. I'm not sure. But yeah, I really, I prefer this. So I have like a ton of colors. I'll show y'all my folksy that I'm doing in that one. So the main body is in this. And then the uh, cream is also Nord. But I'm holding the cream. This is the cream. It says this one is a uni color not exactly sure what that means so you get 186 yards with these and then I'm holding the cream double with the uh, cream kid silk mohair because I originally got this mohair to do full mohair held double with the windfill sweater windfell sweater but I read over the pattern and I didn't get enough and that happened to me the first time I ordered from wool warehouse too and not, not their fault, my fault. I, for some reason, while I'm doing my calculations, I'm coming up like three balls short. So I decided to hold it double with this because if you go on Ravelry and take a look at some of the project pages, they look, some of them look so fuzzy. And I just love that, especially just in the color work. Like there's a theme, I do this all the time. And while I have you here, we can just check out the flutes. They're not the best but these look nice. So far, I've not really had to go a big distance. I was watching some podcast or some video on Instagram or something, and um, a lot of people like to catch floats like five to seven stitches apart, and it kind of stresses a lot of people out. Like They put a lot of effort into catching their floats, and... Um, yeah, it kind of it make, can make your attention tight because you're catching them too often. And the video I was watching, she said, just forget about it. Just 
catch them when you want to catch them. Make sure your attention is just loose, like just relax and do it however you want to do it. And I totally agree. At first, my first couple of Colorwork sweaters, that's what I did. I caught them every five. And not only does it slow you down, but your tension will, it gets t it's too tight because you're twisting the yarn and, you know, however you do it. But with my most recent sweaters, not including the Arata, but this one for sure, whenever I'm pulling my contrast color through, I do make sure I have it on the left. That way, like, main color domination and all of that. But I just kind of pull it a little bit looser when I knit that contrasting stitch, the first one. And then as you continue knitting, it kind of just evens itself out and like settles back into itself. Hopefully that makes sense. But if you are having any kind of trouble with doing color work knitting like that, that is definitely what I recommend. Just kind of do it, catch your floats just however you want. Like I'm not even catching mine anymore. I just let them go and you can see they're just loose and but the color work is fine the stitches are fine they're actually I feel more defined than if I have been catching my floats and making it a little bit tighter it just all all around feels like a more relaxed situation and also I mean main thing I don't get stressed out when I knit which I know a lot of us have that problem where we're, we stress ourselves out while we're knitting but yeah so I did want to say for this one, I'm making size E, which is the 45.5 inch bust, or let's see, I wrote it down, 113.5 centimeter bust. So I wanted it to be a little bit um, more fitting, fitted than I normally do because I really like the oversized aspect of sweaters. It's like the whole reason I make them is just because I want to be comfortable in all of my handmade things. But after I tried on the errata and it like I didn't think it was gonna fit but it ended up fitting perfectly it kind of made me want more sweaters that are fitted like that so yeah so I've, yeah so I'm about halfway through the first chart there are two charts the main color work chart and then a chart for the sleeves so you kind of like do the same pattern on the sleeves it's so pretty um, this yarn is so soft it is it does scratch me a little bit I guess that's the alpaca which is weird because I have an entire sweater out of Drops Alpaca and it doesn't scratch me at all. So I don't know like what it is, but I, it really doesn't bother me. I could always throw on a t-shirt or a long sleeve shirt underneath it, but I thought I would throw that out there. Yeah, you just never know. And th these yarns are so affordable. Like I can't remember, maybe in US, maybe like $3 and they are only 50 grams. But, I mean, all things considered, and their wool alpaca, like natural, non-super wash, and all of that, all that considered, so you're not buying acrylic, which is that, it's that, or it's more expensive, I would much prefer this route, and I feel like somehow this will last longer, probably not than the plastic, but the drape is nicer, it's just, uh, I just really, I prefer this, so if you, if you've not, um, experimented with any kind of wool yarn or anything like that I would just uh order you order you some and see if you like it but I know there I just recently found out there's some controversy around drops um which really bummed me out because it's kind of like my go-to just non-super wash wool yarn so I'm gonna look into that a little bit more and I have a ton of it now like way more than I need I mean, they're all planned for sweaters. I bought things just for sweaters. So we'll see, but maybe I won't be buying anymore. We'll see. But yeah, let's keep on checking. So my newest, I wasn't sure if I was gonna show this on the podcast today, but I may as well because I'm obsessed with it. I just started those two nights ago and then I had to rip it out because it just wasn't knitting up at the gauge that I wanted it to knit up at. But it is the Trescow sweater. I'll uh, definitely put up a picture and who it's by and all. I think it's Hannah DeVoe. But yes, I'm bad at pronouncing things like the rest of the world, I think, sometimes. But it's a free uh, top-down raglan sweater. So here it is. This is all I have so far. And these needles are tiny. I think they're 16-inch circulars probably says on here 
doesn't say. So US 6 4 millimeter is what I'm using and I cast on in the 4 and am just going trudging ahead with the 4. So I it's a free pattern by the way. That's what originally drew me to it. I was watching Sandra Paul from the Cherry Heart podcast and she made it and raved about the pattern and then she told, said it worked up so fast. So I immediately went and downloaded the pattern and here we are because I had a couple of balls of this yarn via 44th Street that I got with a gift card before I decided to stop supporting Hobby Lobby. So y'all, if you've been here before, I'm, I'm making another no frills out of some cream. So here it is. This is a four millimeter gauge as well, just held single, just not held with anything. So it's kind of see-through and chain mailing just a little bit and I didn't realize that while I was knitting it and w once it's knit up it, there's a big difference in the fuzziness um it's 70% acrylic 30% polyamide it says it's a three-way it's like a fingering weight um maybe heading into a DK weight but since I didn't like that I started the this jumper in just the pink and then I didn't like the chainmail uh, action that was going on so since I had all of this cream uh, kid silk mohair drops I that I'm only using for the bright feather and then I didn't have enough for the wind fell to do the whole sweater in it I do have enough to hold this yarn double with this so here is what it's working up like and is that not amazing is it not amazing so it's the raglan increases have this really pretty all it is is a yarn over and then you have your your sti your stitches in the middle so there's your increases on each side so it's just like any other raglan you cast on and you're increasing so right now I just finished the short row shaping I really wish I had bigger needles so y'all could actually see this but I just finished the short row shaping and now I'm just gonna go around and around for I think it's like 31 rows I'm making the um, 110 centimeter size she recommends I think 3 to 10 centimeters of positive ease so I was going to make the 115 centimeter size bus size just so it's like super cozy but I don't think I'm going to have enough of the mohair to do that. Then I thought, well, maybe I could just like not do the cuffs. But then again, it is a crop sweater as well. I plan on making mine longer, not cropped. So yeah, I'm definitely going to run out of the mohair if, um, yeah, make the bigger size. So I'm just going to do the, um, the 110 size because my bust is a 106. So it still gives me four inches of positive ease. And maybe because I'm holding this double it'll work up a little bit bigger too but I just I'm I cannot get over how pretty this is yeah so it makes me wish that I had done the no frills that way as well not my indie dyed yard one but the this one out of the 44th street in the cream it's so pretty but I will not knit another no frills for sure and I just love the way these increases look as well. So this is a free pattern. If you're um, on the fence about starting a raglan sweater, I recommend this pattern. It is better written than the no frills. And um, yeah, it's just better written. And it's free. So, And there's also one by Andrea Mallory. I guess the So Faded is raglan. I'm not sure. She's got a couple of raglan patterns as well. So, yeah. And I love the way her patterns are written. I would definitely check her out, too, if you're in the market for a raglan sweater. But, yeah. And the neckline is unique, too. You cast on and then you pearl knit pearl to get this pretty garter uh, detailed neckline, which I've never done before. I thought that was really pretty. Just the whole thing is really cute. And the details... I love so this is my current obsession and this next one I'm going to show you you'll see is my second newest obsession so I don't know why I keep saying hello because I'm just going to edit this all together and you all won't know that I'm coming back and forth it's been a long week today is Friday by the way April 10th I just had my 28th birthday last Friday 
on the third feeling older feeling tired yeah anyway thought i would throw the date out there this is folksy by melody hoffman one of the cutest freaking sweater patterns that i have come across here it is i'm making no i'm not i must be getting it confused this is only her patterns a pattern this pattern is size very size inclusive i normally wear an xl especially because of my bust size it's about 43 inches 44 but this is a medium which makes me feel really good in the messed up society way of life and all that y'all understand what i'm trying to say i guess but yeah um this pattern is so cute in her sample she kind of does it out of the same these colors so i copied her because i loved the the tan and the yellow and the fun thing about this are these little baubles so I did a knit bobbles. I didn't break out the crochet hook or anything. There's lots of tutorials. Oh no, I'm dropping all of my stitches. Ooh. So here are my floats. Again, they're not perfect because I just decided that I didn't want to worry about it. And it turns out that that is really good for my mental health while I knit I am so much more relaxed I'm just going with the flow and especially like if you know your gauge is on or you know how if you like it bigger I always talk from my own perspective obviously but I since I like my sweaters a little larger and loose I really don't pay that much attention to gauge unless it's too small so I just have been really loose knitting taking my time and all that so I call these flea stitches these little tiny um, contrast color just one knit stitch out of every you know however many but I also think that they may be called lie stitches I'm really not sure but I do call them flea stitches because just like a little like flick or like a little like flick stitch or something so this is written into the pattern these up here but I really like the idea of having them through the whole sweater so I am continuing that pattern all the way down through the whole thing and I'm pretty convinced I'm gonna do it on the sleeves too because I think it might look it won't look weird but it just kind of will fit all together a little bit better I think if I do it on the sleeves and it's fun it's a little bit of a change up I'm doing uh, the little <laughs> the little flick stitches the same uh, numbers apart and everything on the bottom as the pattern called for on the top and I am doing this is my contrast color contrast color two it's cream and then of course the yellow so all of these are nor drops nord as well so the main color is this one it's a mix that's all it says and again they really just don't have it's color seven and then they have dye lots but most of them don't have names so here's the cream which looks more white up on the screen it's really just Cream. and then this really pretty like golden yellow that I love 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 I have a ton of this because I got extra because I loved it so much but I don't know what I'm gonna do with it but yeah so all of this is in drops nord and I'm just straight up following the pattern other than those little flick stitches I love that the hem is in a the neck is in a different color and the hem will be in yellow too and I'm gonna do the cuffs on the sleeves so I have split for the sleeves now. Sorry, look at all these ends, that's crazy. But yeah, it's just gonna be a like really casual, fun sweater. Yeah, I think this is gonna be one of my favorite sweaters actually. And I'm really enjoying working on it. It's just so cute, I don't know. The second I saw the pattern, I just had to make it. Like, I liked it that much. And the pattern is really well written as well. I like how it's written, except was it this sweater how she says to split for the sleeves doesn't make any sense like you go you split a little bit for one and then you knit all the way back around and then you continue on that that first sleeve that you split which is kind of impossible because when you split for sleeves you've got to cast on your stitches for the underarm and then keep going from there so when you come back around it's the wrong side so I couldn't really work that out 
and I went into the project notes to look at other people's projects and in the comments and only one person had mentioned it in their project notes that they felt the same way I did about it and that was it no one else said anything so I'm like maybe people just split for the sleeves how they normally do using her stitch counts and all and just kind of ignored that but yeah that was the only thing so if you know how to split for sleeves you can it's fine the rest of the pattern is amazing and I love the sizes let's see this is on 3.75 yeah my 3.75 Chiago needles so yeah um it's really exciting those are all of my current that I'm actually doing something with sweater whips I still have this little guy that I'm not really um super pressed on working with it's the flax light for Charlie out of the Bay Horse Yarns her Barnwood colorway so because it's hot here now look at how little this is it'll definitely uh stretch out whenever I block it she's getting so big she is well, oh my gosh we totally overlooked it she's 13 months now <sighs> she's so big she says dada and not mama but you know whatever break my heart already small one but yeah so I have that and then I have the no frills that I'm working on and there's probably other things but those are the, mo the ones I work on the most like probably every day and now I'm gonna be working on that trust cow jumper like crazy probably at least until I split for the sleeves and lose a little bit of steam on it but yeah I just love that so much the way that's working up ah oh, touch it it's so nice yes okay so next is gonna I'm just gonna talk a little bit about an acquisition that I just got in today that I am stoked 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 on and then I'll just talk about life for a little bit yeah. the most exciting mail is yarn mail is it not is it not it is so exciting so my favorite 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 indie dyer ever <laughs> the only indie dyer that i've ordered from honestly but i do love her bay horse yarns she's based in california in the united states look at how pretty this is so today's friday i think it was monday she posted somebody had knit up something for her in this colorway which is the apple harvest colorway and it was so beautiful and she said hey I have sweater quantities in my shop and I went to her shop and four of them came home with me so I believe that that was on Monday and I'm in Tennessee so it shipped all the way from California during a pandemic she got it out right away her customer service is just unmatched but yeah, so I got this today. I got four of them. Oh. oh my god, they're so pretty. I am freaking obsessed. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of detail, it's the tall socks, her tall socks, which is 100% superwash merino. So there's no nylon or any kind of anything else. The barnwood colorway that I did my no frills, it was her show horse sock. So that had nylon in it. And I usually do like that in my sweaters because I'm just rough on my clothes, rub, rub stuff and whatever. But I had to have this. So let's take a chance and just knit something up in 100% superwash merino and see how it wears. You get 438 yards to 100 grams. Hand wash in cold water recommended. Her website is bayhorseyarn.com. She has uh, Facebook, Ravelry, and Instagram. And here's her label. And one day I'll have an awesome camera. Won't that be, like, the best? It will. It will be the best. So here, because you can't even read that, huh? Sorry, I read it all off, so you have, you have the info. But the colors... So it's like a, a plum, but with darker and lighter sections. Like this one doesn't have a ton of the yellow in it. It has a little bit, but and this is what I love so much about hand dyed yarn is just how different skein to skein is. So it's got greens and yellow and like some really dark little patches there. I have a picture up on my Instagram, which is Southern Makes Co. on Instagram, and it it shot the uh, 
the greens and the yellows so well in those pictures. I took them outside in the natural light. It's, it's dark here now. It's like seven or eight, I guess. Baby's in bed, so I thought, need to podcast. But yes, I just, like... I can't. It's so pretty. So I originally, when I first saw it, I thought I'm going to make the pavement sweater. It's just a plain, long sleeved, really nice, casual sweater. Just very simple to show off the speckles and all of that. But this yarn is so pretty that I just, I don't know if that is the right sweater for it. I have been wanting to make it, but of course the pavement, it's not on my make, my make a million list for this year, and I keep doing that, I keep making these sweaters that are not on my list, which is fine, but my, like, the part of me that is type A is like, stick to your list, stick to it, but yeah, I don't know, maybe that w- it will be, I got four, so I would have plenty, so I have, I have quite a bit to work with, not a ton, Maybe it's so faded, but just without the fade. But the thing is, is that after I bought this, I splurged and bought some more. And I actually did buy a fade set. It wasn't like a made-up fade set, made my own fade set. But it is a fade because I really want to make the Lau cardigan by Eleven Handmade. I'll throw a picture up here. It's so beautiful. All of her patterns are beautiful. I tried to make the Goldenrod sweater. It's, and it's crochet as well, but it eats up so much yarn, so I'm not sure even with that fade that I would have enough for that, maybe. We'll ha- I'll have to look back at my yardage, but I started that in a fingering yarn, and it wants DK or uh, two, lace it, two lace held together to make like a marled, I think, or maybe two fingering. Oh my gosh. I'm tired, but yeah, it wasn't working out. I didn't like like the colors and the thickness and all of that, so I figured I may as well. It was two laces, yes, because I was having a really hard time finding lace weight in um, an indie dyed shop. So what I did was I bought fingering weight because you need half the yardage if you use fingering weight. And I might try to do it then, but that pattern is so gorgeous. And I love cardigans. My Grace cardigan that I knit is one of my favorite pieces. Yeah, so I definitely need another cardigan. And I haven't crocheted a garment in a minute, so I thought that would be perfect. So we'll see. I don't think I want to use this on it because I'm being precious. As usual, that's nothing different. But, Lord, y'all, if you... And like I was just saying about the purple thing... Like, what am I doing? But this is so pretty. I can't. I just can't deal with it. <laughs> like, she's probably tired of me on Instagram going, oh my god, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But like, yeah, it's it's so true. I just, I do love it. So, yeah. I'm so freaking happy about this purchase. Like, it's exactly what I needed to feel more normal about my life so that is my one acquisition and one other thing I wanted to mention is for the bright feather I was having trouble keeping up with the chart because I think it's like a 60 row chart I was just having a lot of trouble I usually I can do it by sight but yeah with this one so I googled knitting tracker apps and I came across my the one that I ended up choosing is called knit companion so you can they have a paid for version and a free version I'm not sure if I'm in a trial or not I didn't put in any info so if I am they're just gonna kick me off but the only part of it I'm, I've used so far is so you upload your pattern into it you have to like do it through Dropbox that's the only way that I could do it but then it will highlight your row. So I just wanted to shout that out because it has helped me so much. You can highlight it two ways. So there's a bar, so I guess you could keep it count stitch by stitch or you know, you highlight to go up your chart. So it's really helped me just keep track of where I am in the pattern so I don't have to sit and count and figure it out each time. And just really conveniently in the bottom corner, they also have a stitch counter. And they it's at five or six, so you can do any kind of combination that you want it's just really nifty and I feel like these have popped up like recently because I remember excuse me trying to find 
knitting apps and crochet apps and not being able to find anything. But then when I Googled it, there were so many results two couple days ago. So yeah, um, if you have trouble keeping track of where you are in charts or just in a pattern in general, I like that one. Uh, really easy to use and I mean, no muss, no fuss. It was kind of reminding me of like Windows 98 though. Like the old school gray, all the like, yeah, Windows 98. But anyway, that's pretty much it. The only thing else that I wanted to talk about was I started watching a bunch of new shows on Hulu. Obviously, we're all stuck at home. And my favorite one so far is Devs. So if you like just, it's pretty crazy. It's kind of thrillery. It gets a little bit dark. It's rated mature. But I like that Nick Offerman is one of the main characters. And I saw, I saw him in the trailer before I watched it. But I did not know that he was one of the main characters. But he is. And he does really, really well in it, too. I really like his acting. It's different for him from what I've seen him in, like, I.E. Parks and Rec and just his comedy sets and stuff. But, yeah, that's a really good show. They're just releasing one episode a week. I hate that, but, you know, whatever. Um, I really wish I could just binge the whole thing. It's, it's that good. And then I'm watching Little Fires Anywhere. That is dramatic. Every single episode is just like, oh, Lord, it's crazy. So because those two are just so dramatic and what's going on in the world right now and everything, I kind of needed a break. So on Hulu, The Strain popped up, which is like, uh, it's about vampire, vampires and just like um, an epidemic that goes through New York and I guess the world. I don't know. I'm only on season two now, but it's been like the perfect, like, cleanser show kind of to like get away it's also I think it's like six-ish years old if not more so all these other shows I've been watching are newer and just they just seem so much more intense like their writing is more intense it just seems so much more real these new shows so it was kind of nice to like throw it back a little bit and watch something supernatural and I don't know, it is still intense and it's still dramatic and sad in some parts and happy in parts and whatever, but there's just something different about it that has just been really nice, honestly. So yeah, if you like like vampire things and like action thriller stuff like that and you haven't seen The Strain, give it a try. I watched the first season like so quick and now I'm maybe halfway through the second. I think there are seven seasons, so yeah, and I like that because I'm tired of these shows that only have like a season and a half or three episodes. Oh, Motherland, Fort Salem. I started watching that too. I think there's only four episodes out right now. All these shows are on Hulu, by the way. But yeah, that one is really good. That's about witches, but the witches are um, in cahoots with the military. So there's uh, mainstream. It's mainstream to be a witch, but you go into the military and they're fighting a force called the spree and it's just it's really dramatic as well but they're only they might be putting out two episodes of that one a week I'm not sure but yeah that's another one they're slow releasing I thought that was a Hulu original I don't know why they're doing that with Hulu originals I don't know but anyway um so I said I would tell y'all my Instagram is southern makes co on Instagram I'm so tired. And then on Ravelry, I'm just Southern Makes. And I haven't done that great of a job. Charlie, my daughter, has been quite the handful. So I haven't had that much time to get stuff, like, updated. But I don't really do show notes because I just can't. I don't have that much time. I'm trying to work on all these sweaters, okay? But I do update my project pages. So if you see anything that you like, I'll... Uh, just go and check that out and that's basically all the social media that I have for uh, my southern makes right now I since I didn't start back to work I haven't been able to order any yarn to start my business and all of my branding and all of that stuff so that has been put on hold but yeah um, my Instagram I like to post a lot on my Instagram so yeah if you want to go and check that out it's public and give me a follow if you want but if you've watched this far thank you so much for watching Hope y'all enjoyed me rabble, rabble, rattle on about all of my sweaters. As always, I really appreciate um, all of the views that I get on my videos. I know I'm super small time, but I just enjoy doing this. So it means a lot that some of y'all watch. But yeah, thanks so much and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!